Well, hello, friends, race fans, Downhill Southeast racers. Welcome to the Sugar Mountain Downhill Southeast pre-race podcast. I'm here with Nico Malali, who's got a nice uh, bike park lift tan going on from some riding in snowshoe. Nico, we're getting ready to uh, kick this last week off before the finals of Downhill Southeast. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, Will. Uh, looking forward to... I'm, I'm going to be back on the bike this weekend. So I did the first race, and then I missed a chunk of my life and i'm coming back for the last one so uh the weather looks awesome this week so i'm really looking forward to it yes it does um let me wind the clock back real quick just because um i've got to know are you fully recovered from the national championships at ride rock creek because i know it took me a little longer than normal to kind of get back in the groove um, that was a ton of fun man yeah it, it was an awesome week it was definitely really busy for our crew and our team putting on the event um but i was i was kind of relieved when it was over it was definitely a big build up and uh, i thought from the rock creek side it all went pretty pretty darn well for the first national champs we hosted and um yeah i took a couple of days but we're definitely recovered now yeah i agree and it was such a fun time and downhill finals day could not have been any better um, we had some breakout stars come onto the scene. Um, and then we had, yeah, some, some old stalwarts, uh, taking titles. I got to say, who was Kale Cushman? Cause Kale Cushman just kind of like dropped onto the pro scene. I'd never even seen her ride and, uh, ended up on the elite women's podium. Yeah. She crushed it, especially taking the win in dual slalom. Yep. Um, I think she's on the, is she on the Killington mountain school team? I don't know if she rides for KMS. She's from Maine. I got to talk to her a little bit in the pits. Um, and yeah, full of energy. And um, I, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of her next year. She told me this was the first time that she had really raced outside of like her home Northeast area. Well, when it rains for dual Salem, the the Northeast riders, they come out. Yep. And they also jump in the pond. Um <laughs> But uh, I do have to say congratulations to Luca Shaw. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, Nico, I know that you, know, you and Luca have been friends for a long time. Same, same with me. I met Luca in 2009 um, at a grassroots uh, Dirty Bird downhill race. I think he was about 14 years old. So, yeah, to see him get that national championships win uh, was pretty special. And I think he ended up cooking his own Waffle House later that night at the uh, end of the post-race celebrations. Yeah, it looked like he had a pretty good night after winning that race. Um, but yeah, Luca was the the guy to win it. I mean, he's the on form guy at the World Cups this year from the U.S. and he he's the guy that lives the closest to the venue. Probably aside from me, done the most laps on the track. So I was uh, my money was on Luca, and he came through. Yes, he did. That that was huge. The times were so tight. I mean, the top. Uh, five were separated by 1.1 seconds. I still have my official USA cycling results sheet here on my desk. You know, I just keep it close by if I need to reference it. Um, before we jump into the sugar details, I do have to throw something back to snowshoe because that was our last round of downhill Southeast and the pro men's podium was all these young guys. It was Asa Vermet, Lucas Dodora and Collier key with the top three. Um, not a one of them older than 16. Yeah, man. It was, uh, pretty cool to see all the youth coming up. I think that's from my side, it's really important to give them the chance to, to sign up for elite, like let them race the pro category. Um, if people want to race up, they can. And, um, I think it gives those kids a shot to see where they're at compared to the best guys out there. And, you know, when we get World Cup guys like Luca, Dakota, Aaron, um, these guys have all raced our series this year. And these 16-year-olds can sign up and compete against them, see where they stack up, see where their time compares. That's, uh, that's a really good experience for those guys. And I, I think there's really nothing better. So it's awesome that at Downhill Southeast we can do that. I try to encourage those other um, World Cup riders to come out as much as possible just for that reason. Like everybody in the field can see where they stack up compared to a World Cup guy. I think, um, yeah, that's like the, sometimes the best thing you can do is as a, as a pro rider, go out and 
kick everyone's ass just to let them know where they stand. That's <laughs> that's how to give give the youth a benchmark to try to shoot for. And um, yeah, it's awesome that through our series that at the various rounds we have such talented riders. Like if you look at the winner of each race that we've had this year, the talent is so deep. So that's awesome that we can do that at Downhill Southeast. Yeah, Snowshoe was a fun one. We had perfect track conditions. Um, pretty rare to see that there. And yeah, people were were enjoying the course, uh, trying new lines, finding new speeds. Zana Logar also found a new gear on the race weekend, and she took the pro women's weekend in her uh, pro women's win, excuse me, in her home state, um, besting Shell Peugeot. So congratulations to Zana on that finish. Yeah, I think Zana will probably be a favorite for this weekend as well. She will. Well, that's a perfect segue. Let's uh, let's dive into Sugar Mountain. Um, this will be our finals for the year. Was not originally supposed to be that way. Um, unfortunately, some lift construction uh, delays at Massanutten have canceled that round. Um, so Sugar will be our finals. This was also our finals here in 2021, Nico. And I looked back at the results sheet and you were the bridesmaid by eight hundredths of a second. I don't know if you remember that or if you just decided to to let that go. But uh, <laughs> Dakota won and you were second by eight hundredths. Yeah, I remember I got second. I remember how close it was. But I remember uh, the splits we were like trading off the whole way down the whole way down the course. It was a mud race, too. So it was like pretty treacherous conditions. And it was, it was surprising we were that close. Um, but yeah, a bummer that we had to cancel Mass and Nutten, um, for, from everybody involved. Like they were really excited to have the race, the company that was hired to build their new chairlift wants to like get it done and get out of there. But there's some parts from Doppelmeyer that they can't guarantee when they're going to arrive. So we thought the best move would be to let people know as soon as possible instead of, you know, dragging it out any further. Um, we definitely looked at delaying it and like when we could possibly have it at Massanutten. And with um, like our, our staff that runs the race, mainly me and Logan, um, we're going to be doing the World Cups. We've got like so many races in a row in September and then even into October with Mount St. Anne. So it would just get pushed so late, delays people's season. Um, you know, we want to get it wrapped up and they can get on and, and do other stuff. Um, and then there wasn't really a good way to move the venue either. So we, we definitely considered all that before arriving at the decision to cancel the finals. Um, but that seemed like it was going to be the best for everyone involved. And we're going to try to wrap it up at sugar in a, in a big way. So, um, SRAM came through with some awesome prizes for this weekend. Um, all the cat one and pro categories are getting a boxer if they win the new boxer. So that's sweet. Um, second place gets a shock and third gets a code break set. So we've got some killer prizes and then we've got 60 maxis tires to give away as well. So if you're uh, on the overall podium, you're going to be looking pretty sweet on Sunday with some awesome gear. Yeah, I saw that post um, on the Downhill Southeast Instagram. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, you know, SRAM supported the series overall prizes to that level in the past, but man, it just never gets old seeing somebody stand on the top of the podium with a boxer. Um, so I'll be excited to see all that. And I saw quite a few riders comment saying, Oh, you know, pressure's on now. Like they check their uh, placement in the overall and they're like, man, this, this boxer could be mine to lose. For sure. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's the new fork that just came out last week. So it'll be awesome to give all those out to the riders. Yes, it will. And Sugar Mountain's going to be a good test for all the riders, not only Pro Cat 1, but Cat 2-3. Um, it's been a couple years since we've been there. Like we said, 2021, it was our finals, and it was a nasty affair. I mean, just treacherous conditions. Um, yeah, I remember that was one of the races. I was the most nervous uh, watching Caroline race. I mean, I always get a little bit nervous, you know, when your wife's in the race, but when conditions were like that, I just... I was, I was down there, a little ball of nerves for sure. Um, but we're going to be on a similar track for the Pro Cat 1 racers that we were on back in 2021. And um, Oh, actually, no, I stand corrected. Are, are we going to be on that same track from 21? Yeah, it's the same track from 21. We did the old school track in 20, <clears throat> and now we're back on this newer down south Narnia track. Yeah, and that was a track that we actually went up and helped build before the last race. It was 
very recently finished. So it was super fresh. Then it rained on race day. It was actually so sick during practice. And then on Sunday, we got that rain that came in and it just made it just so slick um, through through a lot of those off cambers that it was pretty slow and um, tech. Uh, but I think now that the track's burned in, it's two years older, it's going to be a lot more weatherproof than it was when it was brand new. Um, but in any case, the weather forecast looks awesome for the weekend. You never know in the mountains, but it looks really good. But yeah, that track, I think, will be super fun. It was really fun then. It's got a little bit of everything, some rocks at the top, goes down that huge slab, and then some tight single track to the left of the main ski trail there, and then into like a cool jump out of the woods, and then some grass turns to finish. So yeah, I think it'll be a cool racetrack for sure. Oh, it definitely will. I was hoping to burn it in over the weekend. Uh, I got some dad laps in in the afternoon after Caroline rode in the morning and was lapping the race course. And you're right, it's broken in really well. And there's a number of different lines. Like I think, like you said, in that really wet condition, it was kind of one line, a little bit slower. Um, but folks have been riding it for a couple of years. So you've got high lines, intermediate lines, low lines um, in that single track section. Uh, we'll see how the boys at Sugar tape it. But I think it's going to be a great test. And Sugar Mountain really has... I mean, the best downhill terrain in the state. It's got the most vertical of any of the bike parks right at 1,200 feet. And it's just a perfect mix of terrain. Like you said, it's got big rocks. And it's got plenty of steeps, dark dirt, and some of that open ski slope stuff that you can only get at a resort. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, like I said, the track has a little of everything. It's going to be a really good test for our finals. Well, the Cat 2-3 track is going to be fun as well. You just shared with me the course map and... Uh, folks at home can take a look at that too, but it's going to be a little different than what we've seen in the past. Um, we've had some really long cat two, three tracks here at sugar. Um, it, it, that track that we raced here in 2021 for cat two, three, it's one of my favorite runs on the mountain for a bike park day. It is pretty long and the crew are going to do a new route this year. We're going to do hair scramble off the top, which is just an awesome high country single track rocky rudy some technical turns and then we're going to switch on to carolina cruiser uh, which has some big berms uh, pretty unique that you get to ride you know bike park style berms on a downhill track you can carry a lot of speed and then it hits a technical section called rally alley which is a little bit of legacy downhill track from years gone by before they had the downhill park so this stuff's really burned in and then it hops back on to the scamper trail at the bottom. So Nico to be a little shorter, I think time wise, but it's going to pack a serious punch. Yeah. I think it'll be cool. It kind of touches all the trails on the mountain for those riders. Um, and, and yeah, it's a little shorter, but it's, it's in the window that we're looking for. I think the hair scramble course was like too long for a downhill. It was like five, six minutes. Some people were even, be, like beginner riders were even longer. So this will put us kind of in that three to four minute window that we're shooting for. And I think it'll be, yeah, really good all around racetrack, a little bit of everything, um, single track to start some berms, some flat turns and, uh, yeah, just a fun route down the mountain. Yeah, no doubt. It's going to be really good for junior racers as well. Um, kind of keep the speeds a little higher. Cause I think, um, the speeds were a little bit lower when you did that full hair scramble to supernatural, but, uh, yeah, the kids should be loving this one. Um, so, yeah, and we hope to see a lot of North Carolina folks out. Like, we're only uh, an hour and a half away from Charlotte. So, you Charlotte folks uh, in the metro, if you were waiting to hear what the course was um, to get signed up, well, we've got a couple more hours uh, before registration closes. Yeah, we have a whole other day, right? It's Monday today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it isn't Monday? Okay, yeah, it is Monday. <laughs> I'm on baby time over here. Uh, speaking of timing... Um, schedule were pretty polished from what we've been running the past couple weekends. I think it was only the, the mountain Creek race that we had to change the schedule for the national. Um, I'd say the only difference is that most of the bike parks were open every day and sugar's only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, um, we, we updated the schedule to, to show that bike park was not open for free riding on Thursday. Hopefully, um, everybody gets that message. Um, and yeah, there's, there's just no mountain ops on Thursday. We will have the pit spaces marked out. So if people are arriving Thursday afternoon, they can definitely get their spots set up for Friday. 
Um, but yeah, no, no riding on Thursday. Um, as far as everything else goes, we're yeah following the same schedule. There's opportunities to walk the tracks. Um, both tracks are pretty much separate the entire way down. There's just like, kind of like the finish line turns that are the same. So during the other, the other groups practice, you're, you're welcome to head up on the mountain and walk your racetrack. Um, obviously just please be mindful of other racers on course. And then, um, as long as you're up before the lift shuts, I think lift goes till 5 PM each day. Um, yeah, as long as you catch that last chair, you can walk down and check the course after practice as well. And then with the pit spaces, we have a limited number of pit spaces available. Um, and they'll be in the employee lot, which is a gravel parking lot. That's, uh, just to the rider's right of the finish line. So it's, it's actually really close to the lift. It's, um, the best location. And those pit spaces are 50 bucks for 20 by 20, which is consistent on what we've been doing for all the paid pits this year. Um, that really just covers the admin to set everything up. And most people have given us good feedback that they, they'd rather pay and have a good spot than have a free for all in the parking lot. So we managed to work that out with sugar and the, the location for the pit spots is awesome too. Um, general parking will be in any of the main parking lots. Um, and you can't, there's, you can't leave anything overnight there. Um, whereas the paid pits you can. So if, uh, I'm not sure what the, what we're at right now in pits, but if there's any available, hop on while you can and grab one if you want. Um, and other than that, yeah, lots of great parking at Sugar. They have paved parking lots now. Um, but like I said, that's just for the day, and then everybody's got to be out at night. There's no camping available at Sugar. However, there are a few campgrounds not too far away. If you just look in that region, um, kind of like Grand Grandfather Mountain region, there's um, – a ton of campgrounds that you can find and then lodging obviously in the area it's a a ton of ski lodging right there at sugar or just up in um banner elk um even up at beach like i i think the last time i was there we stayed at the pinnacle at beach which was only 20 minutes away but had a ton of lodging available so um everybody should be able to still get themselves sorted out and uh so it's a it's a pretty tourist driven area so i'm sure yeah. that you can find everything you need i'll be staying in banner elk we've got a little airbnb up there might uh might go hit the lees mccray dual solemn track after practice on friday for old time's sake perfect nico i do have a question on schedule um how are we doing awards here at sugar we've got the the overall series awards um to give out in addition to the day's awards and you know, we have the pro race early in the day. So are all, are we going to do the series awards for cat one in the break? Or are we going to do the series awards at the very end of the day for everybody? Um, I want to say we're going to do the, the race, the, the, the day's race mm -hmm. during the break. And then we're going to do the series awards after everyone finishes. Um, we should be able to calculate them pretty quickly but I don't want to delay the race too long. Um, like if we have that 20 minute window where we switch tracks and run the podiums from the cat, cat ones, um, we should probably just stick to awarding the guys that were finishing that day. And then if you're in the top three for the series, um, we're going to try to get that calculated as quick as we can. Normally we do it through zone four. So the timing company has like a, uh, your name is assigned to some formula and it does the points for us, but we'll, be, we'll probably have to do these by hand just to get the top three out as quickly as we can. Um, so if you think you might be in the top three, you should stick around and we'll get those calculated. Like we probably won't calculate every single person in the category, sure. what place they finished in the series, but we'll at least get the top three or five and um get the podiums done as quick as we can like that's something i really focus on at our races is to try to like i, I respect people have traveled a long way and if they can get home in a decent hour to be able to get on with whatever they have to do on monday that makes it a lot easier to come back to the next race so it's gonna take a little longer to do the overall podiums but it's the series finals um we're handing out like i said a lot of awesome prizes we want to make sure that we get all those calculations done correctly 
And um, yeah, as quick as we can after the race, we're going to get that, get that going. Andrew and I will have our calculators on standby at the finish line. I think uh, the first year when we were at Sugar, we were calculating them. Like I was doing the calculation as, as we were going so we could get I remember it that, yeah. right out after the race. So yeah, the, we should be able to get it done. Those points chases will kind of be storylines throughout the day. So I'll have some notes. I've already been taking a look to see who mathematically could potentially win it. So that'll be fun and uh, definitely stick around. Go ahead and check your points. If you think you're in the hunt for it. Um, yeah. Hang out and celebrate the series overalls um, at the conclusion of the cat two, three race. I want to make a note too, for everybody, like you said, to check your points. We obviously had to do some adjustments at mountain Creek to put people back in their normal categories. That was a, a combination with their national. So there were some category overlaps that weren't the same. And we went ahead and like put people in what category they normally race and assign their points. And we've had to obviously adjust a few people as they went in and they, something wasn't correct, but please go in and like check all your points and email us info at downhillsoutheast.com. If something doesn't look right, that way we can get it taken care of in advance we would hate for it to be an issue while we're trying to get the awards going or after the fact, um, like we, we really want to get that done as quick as we can and we want it to be correct. So if anybody knows anything, let us know as soon as possible. We've, I think sorted most everything out now, but, um, definitely shoot us an email if you see anything. It's really easy to find those points. It's under the results slash points tab on downhillsoutheast.com. And the series points are just below the individual race results. So should be right there just to click away. Nico, I want to ask about um, food at, at Sugar Mountain. I'm curious, are they doing anything different than kind of normal bike park operations, any food trucks in the area? I know that they sometimes will bring a food truck or two into the bike park. I know that they planned on uh, having their food and beverage service that they offer at the mountain ramped up for the amount of people we're going to have this weekend. Nice. Um, as far as food trucks, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent on that. I have been communicating with the Adam, the bike park manager, and he's aware of how many people do, that we're expecting. And there'd be probably a lot of hungry riders looking for something to eat for lunch. So, um, I'm pretty sure they're going to take care of it with in, internally at the ski resort. Um, but he, he mentioned like the possibility to bring in food trucks as well. I can't confirm exactly which route, but there will be food there for people who need it. Nice. Yeah. And if you're traveling from out of town, if you have special dietary needs, there are two grocery stores really close. Um, couldn't be more convenient. There's one um, at the corner of 105 and 194, kind of right there in front of Grandfather Mountain. It's called Ten Castle. I think it's the Lowe's Foods. And then there's another grocery store. Um, if you took a right out of the Sugar Mountain parking lot, it's kind of right on your left, just near that mountain coaster. So, yeah, if you're coming in from out of town and you need to grab something special, um, you should be covered. Yeah, that other grocery store is right across the street. So mm -hmm. there's and, – and there's also, like, a bunch of restaurants within five-minute drive, too. So I think, yeah, like we said, it's a pretty touristic area um, just up in the – up in the – high country, the grandfather mountain district. So there's a lot of people in that area and people coming in for this race will be able to find everything they need. I do want to give a shout out to the bike shop. That's right across the street from sugar mountain headquarters, bike and outdoor. Um, they're right there across the street. If you've got, yeah, last minute part valve core sealant rim tape, some of that nature that, that you can't find in the pits. Um, they are just out the drive to sugar mountain and you take a left and it's right there. You can see the sign. Um, so go hit them up if you, um, if you need something and they've got beers on tap as well for after hours, it's going to be a heck of a race, Nico. Um, I was taking a look at the overall points and unless you've got anything else on kind of week of logistics, I can, uh, give you a couple storylines there. Let's go. I'm ready. Well, I'm going to start out with a shout out to shell Peugeot. If you were watching Crankworks, um, their downhill yesterday, the Rock Shocks downhill at Crankworks Whistler, and you saw Shell's race run, you'll know she had a heavy slam. 
and she is okay. We heard from Shell. Um, she is all right. She was on a heater, mind you, uh, on the brand new 1199 uh, track in Whistler. And um, she's okay. She is going to win the title, Nico. Mathematically, she is uh, 28 points ahead. And there's only 26 points available for, uh, for pro women. Uh, there is still a battle for second place. Um, but uh, maybe Shell can, you know, take a little solace in that. Uh, although her Crankworx race run didn't go to plan. Did you see that race? I, I did. And I got sent the video of, of her OTB. So good to know she's okay. She does that too often. She's got to keep it on two wheels. Yeah, thank goodness she's uh, she's a pretty robust woman to take uh, take all those hits. But uh, we hope she puts a puts a good run together the next time she gets to tackle the track. I don't know if she's going to be at Sugar. I heard before the crash that she was going to hightail it across the continent and and be at Sugar. But I I don't know. She might need to take it easy after that slam. So um, we'll be interesting to see if Shell can make it um, in the men's. Jack Peterson can mathematically win the overall, um, but I don't know, is Asa going to be here? I don't think so. Asa had a big couple weeks, and he's going to be uh, headed home from Whistler middle of the week. So Asa's not going to be racing. Jack's planning on coming. I think uh, Jack's looking good for the overall, all things considered. Yeah, he is. Um, is Grice Crispy going to come out, or is he uh... – he recovering prepping for Fort William after that national team selection. Yeah. I don't think any of the boys are going to be able to make it. I tried to get him to come. They said maybe ride Friday practice, but, um, they're like he, Luca are, are both flying to Scotland on Saturday. So, um, no racing for them. I am going to race Sunday morning and I've got an eight thirty flight to Scotland out of Charlotte airport on Sunday night. So wouldn't be anything that I wouldn't do to <laughs> fit it all in, <laughs> but I need the bike time too. So, um, I think I'll be, I'll be in good shape doing that. We got a, a full rest day Tuesday and then track walk at Fort Williams Wednesday. So I think racing at sugar, getting another full day of riding in, I'll be in my, uh, hour practice in the morning, try how many laps I can fit. I could probably get three if I'm at the top before practice starts. So. I'm trying to get as many as I can. Oh yeah. That lifts fast. Uh, so you can pack them in. Well then yeah, Lucas Dodora and Jack Peterson are, are going to be mixing it up for the top spot. Um, in the overall David Kahn, if, if he comes, he, uh, he's got a solid chance of hitting the podium. So if he can, uh, if he can get a weekend off boss, man, uh, he might have a chance of hitting the podium. I know he's been at most of the rounds this year. Uh, Daniel McMaster and Dylan Conti along with Ronnie Vance are essentially just a couple points behind David Kahn. So there will be some battles to be had for sure. I think I'm not sure if Conti's going to be able to make it, but uh, all the other boys are definitely going to be there. Expect Ronnie, Daniel um, and David. They're all going to be there. I think they all did the full series too, which is really cool. So um, yeah, it should be good race and see who can see who can make it on the podium. There'd be definitely some shakeups in those, that, that third place spot going into sugar. Yeah. And call your keys only a couple points outside is I think he's 10 points back of David Kahn. And he's really only had two results because he's had uh, some injuries in the mid season, but that uh, podium finish at snowshoe bumped him up in the overall. So it's going to be a really fun weekend, man. I'm, I'm excited to be there and it's been fun doing these podcasts. I hope everybody's enjoyed them. And I guess this is the last one. Yeah. Last one for the season. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, opening round will come around before we know it. Um, we got most of the series dates uh, drafted in for next year. Um, no big surprises. It'll be looking similar to this year. But um, I can say we'll be starting off at TTC the first weekend in March, just like we have the past few years. So um, we'll be jumping on this podcast uh, the week before that. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Our idea was just to try to get out all the information. If, if people are signed up for the race, they can throw this on even while they're driving there. It's only 30 minutes and hopefully they get any details they might need when they show up to be, um, 
just make their weekend a little easier. So thank you, Will, for, for hosting it. And uh, I think this was uh, just a nice little touch for our series this year. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome, Nico. It's great to be on here with you. Shoot the breeze a little bit, reminisce on the the past round and and get ready for the rounds to come. So it's been a blast, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the show and we can't wait to see you at Sugar Mountain. Nico, see you in a couple days. Yeah, man. See everybody at Sugar Mountain.